have courted Murdoch, have taken brown envelopes from Murdoch, have uh, been under the influence of this man who was in the business of whipping up hatred, not just against the Muslim community, other communities were targeted as well. So we're living in very interesting times where, like the dictators in the Middle East, Murdoch's empire is also crumbling and inshallah we'll see an end to him, the man who was a warmonger, the man who, whose newspapers sold wars. The real axis of evil in the run-up to the Iraq war, the real axis of evil was Murdoch, Bush, and Blair. So this is how powerful the, the media is, but it's not just newspapers. How many of you have watched or shown your children the cartoon film Aladdin? I wonder how many of you have watched it. I watched it as a, as a kid. And the opening sequence, there are two versions of Aladdin, and the very first original version of Aladdin opens up with the main character. And he says, I come from a land, a faraway place, where they cut off your nose if they don't like your face. It's barbaric, but hey, it's home. Now that message, what message does that send out to any child? It tells them those people with olive skins who come from that faraway place, they're barbaric, they're primitive, they're backward. That whole feeling is conveyed in the opening sentence of one of Disney's best-selling videos. Complaints were made, and in the end, Disney did cut out the, they cut off your face, the, off your nose, if they don't like your face, but they left in the rest. And this sort of subliminal message that there's something odd about people who come from that part of the world, it's gone out not to millions, but tens and tens of millions. More recently, I'm sure that you've all seen the, um, and, and heard the news about the, the shocking terrorist attack in Norway. Now, I've got some copies of the papers today. I went out and bought some. And uh, the Wall Street Journal, Norwegians in mourning as toll rises, and there's more stories inside. The Guardian, Norway counts its dead, thousands gather at Oslo Cathedral, gunman claims attacks gruesome but necessary, and uh, there's more on the inside. The Times, Norwegian killer, linked to extremism in Britain, did maniac plot his gun rampage in London. The Independent, Faces of Hatred, Norway's Mass Killer, Life Laid Bare. And today's London Evening Standard, Massacre Checks on UK Extremists, Norway Gunmen Met Far Right on Trip to London, Cameron Orders Crackdown as Killer Faces Court. There's one word missing from all of this, and that is terrorist. Now, can you imagine if he had been called Ahmed or Bilal or Muhammad? Can you imagine what the headlines would be? What on earth do you call a man who starts a bombing campaign in a capital city and then goes on to an island where there are hundreds of youth 
and goes on to kill nearly 98 Norwegians. Isn't that terrorism? And we find out he's been plotting and planning for nine years. This massacre, this act of terrorism. And yet, the media at the moment are in a state of shock because he isn't called Bilal, because he isn't called Ahmed, because he's not a Muslim. They're in a state of flux. They're trying to portray this man as a loner, as a madman, as a one-off. That's interesting because according to one story, he came over to London and met up with nine or ten others in recent years. And he was inspired, according to um, his words, by a man called Richard. He hasn't expanded on who that is. But in this 15,000-word diatribe that he has written over a period of years, he quotes Melanie Phillips from the Mail, the authoress of London Stan. These sort of people who criticize us, journalists like Melanie Phillips, think tanks, counter-terrorism think tanks like Quilliam, like the Policy Exchange, the blogs like Harry's Place, all of those organizations and groups are a conveyor belt of hatred for the likes of that man, that terrorist. And now we have seen the turmoil that he's caused. And our pain goes out to, our sympathy goes out to the Norwegian people because many of us can understand their pain and their frustration. I was visiting the Muslim community in Norway recently and they're a wonderful community, a community under fire, but alhamdulillah, they're doing their best. And I noticed that in the cathedral yesterday, a few Muslims went along and people had said, why are you coming along? And they said, because we want to share in the grief. This is our country as well. We are as shocked as you. And these Muslims who walked into the cathedral are just like Brother <clears throat> Idris had said. They are the ambassadors to our faith. They are the ones who are going to make people who are afraid of us start to reconsider their position. Now, I don't know who's in this crowd. We could have some undercover reporters from Channel 4, maybe Panorama. Please, don't bother with your secret cameras. Come out. I'm inviting you out into the open. There's nothing to be afraid of. There's no need to secretly film what I have to say. But I wonder how many of you watched the Panorama doc documentary on Muslim schooling. John Ware, the presenter, is an Islamophobe, an Islam basher, somebody who hates Islam. It's quite obvious by his reports and portrayals. And he did this program on Muslim education and, and singled out um, only one um, signaled out Islam as, uh, as the only religion where teachers are, um, are justifying and in some ways where's